a, a, a dear friend of mine, Amin Hussein, who's a Palestinian organizer, often says that our liberation is collective or it's non-existent. And that really is, is the case, you know, not beyond borders, beyond race, beyond class, beyond sexuality, beyond profession. And so it's, so I, I love the fact that we're going to, for, as we're going to, as we move on with, with today's discussion, we're going to be joined by more folks that are going to talk about the ways that some of these systems, um, the ways of bad legislation, the way that all of these, these, the same things that we've kind of spoken about with some, some degree of framing specifically in how the, how of racial oppression and class repression, but also the way that it impacts you know folks within the sex worker communities and other communities who's who are impacted by a heteropatriarchal idea of of what is art and what is criminalized. And so thank thank you Juno and Z for joining us. Thank you. I'm really excited. Hi. To have you. Hi thank you. You know, would you like to start with your description and then I'll go after you? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, visually, I'm a white woman with long brown hair, um, bright blue eyeshadow, brown lipstick, uh, red heart-shaped earrings, a leopard print top um, in a plain bedroom. Um, and my pronouns are she, her. And I am Z Royal, artist and co-producer of BOW. I'm also the communications director of the Sex Workers Project at the Urban Justice Center, kink educator, writer, and performer in the sex work industries. So my pronouns are Z, they, and them. I identify as Black. I do have a caramel complexion. I also have turquoise, blue, green hair in a messy top knot, black eyeliner, a leather top, a silver chain and black carabiner. In the backdrop exists a silver bar where black rope, breast silver chain and a blindfold are hanging in space in front of a white wall. So I wanna start off this discussion talking about Juno Mack's book Revolting Prostitutes that was published in 2018 and also written with Molly Smith. I wanted to say to you, Juno, that this is the most progressive text I have yet to read on sex work, specifically in the industry and also connecting that to Decrim. And normally I don't read introductions, <laughs> but because yours was so enthralling, I want to start off with just a little bit of that reading and then how it actually blends into some inspiration that I also wrote. Yes. So I will quote you. <laughs> so the beginning of the introduction of Revolting Prostitutes starts with, sex workers are everywhere. We are your neighbors. We brush past you on the street. Our kids go to the same schools as yours. We're behind you at the self-service checkout with baby food and a bottle of Pinot Grigio. If I may continue, we are your fantasy. The reason why you come day and night. We deserve credit for helping you give better head. The Shabari artist who taught you how to tie your partner up. A perfect reason to masturbate. The one who spanked you into ecstatic oblivion. We aim to help you experience pleasure that could lead you towards the path of orgasmic enlightenment. So thank you, Juno, <laughs> for wow, sharing awesome. your knowledge and mm -hmm. perspective, and especially having come from a lived experience. It's too often that we hear from researchers, advocates, and academicians, and some other enthusiasts on this topic, but I just feel like they are the very clients who lie recumbent when it comes to sex worker rights and activism. So how has this book empowered you 
the sex work industry and also educated society when it comes to opening minds and expanding ideas around sex? Um, yeah, well, thank you first off for, for that, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, with the book, we felt, me and my co-author Molly, we really felt that for a long time, sex workers have been a group spoken about, um, sometimes spoken to, but very rarely spoken with. And even more rarely do we lead the conversation. Uh, and so when we're not leading those conversations, it's very easy for us to be categorized in, according to very simplistic ideas about who we are, who we might be, um, our bodies and experiences. And that has that tends to mean that sex workers are divided into a dichotomous idea about villains and victims or empowered and enslaved. Uh, these incredibly reductive ideas about sex workers really don't serve the full, uh, the richness of the sex worker movement and the kinds of experiences that we do have. I think that a lot has been done um, in, the, in the second wave, uh, you know, the sex work movement up till now to reframe this idea of the villain as someone who's actually uh, sexually empowered, who has something to say about sex. Uh, but I, do, I think that we have a long way to go before we really trouble this distinction between empowered and victimized. Um, and we really have to do more to recognize that sex workers are in fact survivors and that there is no hard and fast distinction between um, survivors and sex workers. And that sex workers are themselves at the helm of survivor led movements um, and that we can have a more nuanced approach this is what we've tried to do with the book, to try and have a more nuanced conversation uh, about empowerment, about um, exploitation, and recognize that a lot of the time sex workers have a range of experiences that kind of encompass all of this. And if we can lead more conversations, um, such as what we've tried to do with the book, but also what I think Body of Workers is, is trying to do is to start a conversation and, and lead that conversation, be the ones holding that space, and then we can make sure that we're in charge of those narratives and that they really reflect what our lives are actually like, rather than having narratives um, imposed onto us or projected onto us by people that have never sold sex. Uh, so I think that's really important. That's one of the many things that we wanted to do with the book and really see it as a starting point for a conversation, uh, which is why it's so great that when you read out the beginning of the book, you, you know, introduced some of your own ideas because it, it can't just be about two sex workers. It can't just be about one collective. It's a global movement, you know, and, and there's a lot to say. There's a lot of perspectives. Um, right. I totally agree. And I really just enjoy too how you spoke about it from a feminist perspective. I also wanted to quote that um, that's you, you talked about the fact that sex workers are the original feminists shaping and contributing to social movements across the world. And that's something that we rarely hear. We mostly hear from swerfs, you know, people who are sex works exclusionary feminists and we're not actually hearing from a feminist perspective that actually is more evolved. So yeah. I thank you for that. Yeah, sex workers have been embedded in liberation movements throughout history. Uh, they're just often not really included in the version of history that everybody comes to understand. Mm -hmm. Sex workers were part of the original uh, Women's March. They've been involved in workers movements going very far back. Uh, they were embedded in the Mau Mau liberation movement uh, so I think it's really about recognizing that sex workers have always been at the heart of the labor rights movement, women's movements, queer liberation, uh, and they, they need that credit, really. Um, and also artist spaces. Right. Hookers, hookers have always been in artist spaces. Um, I'd love to know, actually, about your perspective as an artist and how your art is a conversation between, like, your experiences um, in the sex industry uh, and outside of it and how that kind of influences what you do as an artist? Yes, I actually grew up in a very repressed circumstance in Texas where most of my early days were um, centered around discovering my sexuality through fantasy. And um, some of that might have been trying to pick up Harlequin, Harlequin novels, like, you know, <laughs> finding those in the parents' room or, you know, finding the joy of sex. But I have to say, um, as I've evolved, I started as a writer and I was writing out these erotic fantasies even in junior high because I felt like, you know, what we were reading so far was so limited. <laughs> but then um, 
I broke out of Texas and came to New York so that I could be my full self, specifically as a queer, specifically as a genderqueer person. And um, at that time, I discovered um, communities like Brown Girls Burlesque, where I started off using my skills in dance um, and also being able to show myself and empower myself in the way that I wanted. And even though I was in costume and I had to also um, be, I had, had to be kind of hidden because I had a social work job as a therapist as well at the same time. Um, I, I felt like I don't wanna hide this aspect of myself. It's really important for me to work my root chakra to be able to not be sexually frustrated in a sexually frustrating country <laughs> and to really just um, be my full creative self. I have to say that the thing I do love about sex work as I've evolved to um, from burlesque to then moving to Europe and becoming a spank therapist, doing bondage with chain at Rome Bondage Week, the only black person doing this. Um, I really start to feel more and more like I need to see more of myself out there so why don't I be that person? You know, there's not a lot of BIPOC TGNC people that see themselves out there in the industry and in film um, specifically. So I started to get into film for that reason. I am now in the, the midst of doing a performance art piece called Daymares. It's about erotic anxiety. And I think that's also talking about the elements of eroticism that we never really discuss. The fact that it's not always, um, you know, just hot and sexy is sometimes you're just super nervous <laughs> about what you're gonna experience. Are you gonna come or not? Are you gonna, is this person gonna be pleased or not? Um, I really try to just open up and broaden horizons. And so I'm really happy to be a part of Kink Out and specifically that Bow as a platform is being um, formed so that more artists like me who mm. want to be able to show our full selves, we're non-linear people. <laughs> You know, sex workers are non-linear. We have so many talents, you know. We come from so many different walks of life, like you said in the intro, and I wanna be able to show that proudly. Yeah, and would you mind saying a bit more about Body of Workers and, and uh, what it's trying to do, um, what it's gonna bring like new to the table? Because uh, as far as I know, it's coded by, entirely by BIPOC, TGNC, queer, kinky sex workers which for me is like that's a super radical disruption of the status quo um so would you mind telling us a bit more about it definitely and also it's such a sexy team and i'm happy to be a part of it <laughs> but yes i feel like it's again giving um voice to bipoc tgnc queer people in the sex work industries and really helping us be able to again expand ideas around sex and sexuality be more progressive, show diversity within our communities. Um, it's also an opportunity for um, us to display as, as sex worker artists, uh, the plethora of creative angles there are when it comes to eroticism. I feel like it's a privilege for friends, lovers, enthusiasts to have the opportunity to see our work and to experience our work. And so um, because of, of course, these horrible censorship laws that are increasing right now, I'm feeling like we're going back into time, like we're gonna be in The Handmaid's Tale soon. I don't know how many people read Margaret Atwood, but it talks, it's a very dystopic view of how um, our society is becoming less um, into expanding ideas around sex and sexuality. There's a lot of morality policing going on so right now I feel like it's really important for us to have a virtual safe space um, or what we call a safe house for sex workers um, and artists to come together in community so that we can support each other. And also um, others again, have the privilege to, being a part, to be a part of that community and really appreciate our work. Yeah, and I also think it's, it's, so, it's so much the case that sex workers have created what is desirable and artistically um, rich about an app like Instagram. Uh, we've, we've been a part of why so many people use that app and then being pushed out of it um, and then creating our own new space. In the end, that's where the gentrifiers will want to be, you know, in the future. This is the process. We create new things and then they are co-opted and stolen and then we're pushed away from them. But for now, like the idea of a fresh, new, exciting space where sex workers have control and not this hostile algorithm that's really about 
uh, making money from people like sex workers being allowed to monetize their own sexual labor is really exciting and yes. radical, I think. Yeah. I agree. And I'm just, you know, because of the blocks that we've experienced with shadow banning and also SESTA FOSTA, and then in general, just like misrepresentation. You know, I think it is time for us to step up into the spaces that we deserve to be in. Um, we deserve labor rights like everyone else. And on top of it, personally, as someone who chooses to do sex work, it really um, makes my sapiosexual, demisexual, and my algamaltophilia dreams come true. So I am really into making sure that I'm uplifting um, this very creative, autonomous, sustainable, safe space for sex worker artists. Yeah. Um, do you feel like there are challenges to bear in mind with such with a project like this? Do you think there'll be things to see in the like far off as stumbling blocks potentially to come up against or like um, areas for caution or concern? Because for me, when I think about uh, new platforms I think about new ways that privacy could become an issue you know obviously we have to be able to keep control of uh, our data and stuff like that right I definitely think there's always going to be concerns when it comes to that but um, luckily we have BIPOC TGNC hackers that know how to shift with the change and also know how to continue to encrypt and protect us as sex workers but I think ultimately we want to lead towards decrim. And I think mm -hmm. destigmatization really does help in general, mm -hmm. especially when newer generations recognize the importance of sex and sexuality. And really, um, I'm also working on a documentary film with the Sex Workers Project to really highlight um, sex workers as sex experts, people who are yes. the educators, the ones that, I mean, without us, how would you know that you can try different types of fetishes? How would you know that you know, yes. um, sex. There's so much knowledge. There's yeah. so much like power that we already have. Like right. when I think about when I think about a new platform, I think about like how can we bring with us everything that like our forebears already know, like all of the historical struggles in the street, in the brothel, in the hotel, all of the the knowledge and the wisdom that we bring with us to make sure that we're not like reinventing the wheel over and over again. You know, like we have we have we have people we have a whole movement and if we can try and like bring that with us then we can do incredible things like it, for me i'm so excited about the idea of being able to control my image you mm -hmm. know to have some autonomy over that uh, especially since the pandemic like being having my image online has felt like this new frontier where no one's really looking after us and we have to take care of ourselves we have to be our own elders it's it's right. very stressful yeah, and mutual aid is so important. I think you also stress that in the book that, you know, we've always been doing things on our own because we have to, and we mm. know how to take care of each other in, in community, but we also deserve reparations. So, so that's something that I feel like, you know, also the platform will highlight all the things that we are about, that we are not linear, that we have, we're multi-talented. And um, I think that again, um, Fucking is also creative. I think that it's unfortunate that, that if people are sexually frustrated out there and are demeaning sex workers because of it, I think you need to think again about your own life and what you need in yours. <laughs> so, well, we, uh, with a canary down the coal mine, like I think people think, oh, maybe it's not so important if sex workers disappear from the internet. But if, if we disappear, other people will come after us, you know, like we won't be the, we won't be the, the last people penalized. So. Honestly, people have to consider sex workers' visibility on the internet as an issue of uh, freedom of expression for everybody, you know? Starting with sex workers, it benefits everyone else. Yeah, and I've heard like another sex worker friend say, we are essential workers. So without us, like, what would your life be like? It would be very sexless. Um, I think we should really think about that as far as not just education, sexual healing. And so that's something that, like you said, you highlighted that people need to know more about. Yeah, I'm very excited for like what's coming with, uh, with this project. Um, and I hope that, uh, that we in the UK can like be a part of it because I think if anyone can do this, it's sex workers based in the part of the world that you're in specifically, just because there's such an interesting creative hub of 
sex worker activism that's also incredibly focused on the creative and the artistic, which is something that I'd love to see more of um, in the British sex worker movement. We tend to be kind of like a little bit more um, relentlessly focused on, you know, the, the politics of it and lobbying and the dry stuff. But I'm very excited by what I see coming out of the movement where you are. Um, and yeah, just super excited to be able to have this conversation with you, really. Yeah, me too. And I definitely feel like we will host a lot of the, like eventually when we're really spreading this broader that the UK will also be able to join specifically you. So <laughs> just let us oh, trust me, I will be there on any platform where I can put pictures of my titties. I'll be there. <laughs> like <laughs> I have, I have a back catalog of things that I need to post. Uh, I'm just desperate to express myself. God damn it. And I feel like sex workers have so much to offer. It's not just about making money. It's also about, um, you know, being creative and showing off what we can do creatively. You know, that's, that's also, it's not, obviously it's about decriminalizing sex work. It's about structural change, but mm -hmm. we want, we want bread, but we also want roses. And in this case, the roses is like um, freedom of self-expression and showing people that we, um, yes, we resist. Yes, we, yes, we survive. Um, yes, we withstand, but it's also about thriving. It's also about, um, healing it's, it's all these other things everything has to has to play a part yes definitely and I am happy about the baby steps that have just been taken this year I mean finally 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 the walking while trans ban was repealed on February 2nd it was a long time coming but for those of you who don't know this legislation is repealing the section of the law that was intended to prohibit loitering for the purpose of engaging in prostitution but it ended up being discriminatory and, and really specifically towards trans women, uh, specifically black trans women. So now finally we have some type of liberation that black trans women can walk down the street without being targeted, whether they're doing sex work or not, they should not be. So um, that happened. And then now um, the sex workers project, we actually are heading a campaign in Oregon and we put out a house bill with uh, representative Nos in Oregon. Um, called House Bill 3088, and it's just now started, but at least it's starting um, some decrim efforts with a model that's by sex workers from a sex work-based organization that we hope to spread across the nation. It's really exciting and inspiring to chat with you, actually, and I can't wait to see what else you do. Yeah, I can't wait to see what else you do also, do you know? <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to just put my feet up now. I've written that book. I'm very tired. I'm just, I just want to show off my titties and relax, really. Oh, perfect. We're here for it. <laughs> <laughs> All Thank right. you so much. Thank you both. I just, I, I kept thinking about the old adage, you know, the first they came for the trade unionists and I didn't say anything because I wasn't a trade unionist, right? And it's like, first they came yeah. for the sex workers and then they'll come for the black and the yeah. micro folks. And hopefully folks will, will speak up before they turn around and there's no one there to speak for them. So thank, yeah. thank you both.